blessed assurance Jesus is mine Oh, what a foretaste Of glory divine Heir of salvation Purchase of God Born of His Spirit Washed in His blood This is my story This is my song Praising my Savior Good morning. Um, I'm going to be teaching Sunday school for the next couple of weeks. Uh, Brother Chance asked of me if I would help fill in, so this is new to me, so bear with me. Uh, we're not sure how well this is going to turn out. This is the first time I've ever talked to my camera uh, for any length of time. Um, but for those of you do who don't know me, my name is Brother Preston. I am uh, happy to fill in for Brother Chance and talk about a wonderful Sunday school lesson um, that we're going to be talking about here in Romans 14. Um, for those of you who want to follow along, we are in Lesson 13, I believe it is, Romans 14. Um, may deviate a little bit, don't tell Brother Chance, may deviate a little bit from what the lesson is in your book, but... Um, I think you can follow along, and definitely, if you would like, be sure and have your Bible, because we'll be going through the entire uh, chapter, and uh, it'll be a wonderful thing if you're able to follow along with me. Um, bear with my hand movements. I tend to move a lot. Um, hopefully, it won't be too distracting, um, but we'll get through this, and, uh, and hopefully it'll be a blessing to you, as it's been a blessing to me as I've been studying this and I want to get it to you today. So we'll start with a word of prayer. Um, God, thank you so much for the opportunity that you've given us to come and study your word, even in a remote way, God. Um, the technologies and the abilities you've given us, God, is just amazing that the word can get out further and better than it ever has before, God. And I pray that we would take advantage of those things. Be with us this morning as we look at Romans 14 and what you would have for us, God. Help it to embed into our hearts and into our lives so that we can um, know you more, God. I pray that you would be with today's uh, uh, sermon. Um, be with those who can't be there and those that are sick. I pray these things in your name. Amen. So I want to start today's lesson 
Hopefully you have your Bible and you've turned to Romans chapter 14. I want to talk, start today's lesson with a little bit of a question and a little bit of a confession. Um, the question is, what do Christians do? Maybe even Christians within our own church that really just get under your skin. Maybe it's not anything big or major, but just kind of Oh, it just gets under your skin and it just bothers you. Well, sometimes we end up looking at other Christians and you're like, I don't know about you, but they must not be close to God. I'd never do that thing that they're doing. Or you might think, they must be so, they just haven't gotten to where I am spiritually yet because they haven't gotten past this thing in their life. Or that's not the way I would do it the way I've learned since I was a little boy in church. And so sometimes we can judge people quickly and immediately and be turned off by them or be um, upset or angry at them even by some little things that they do. And Romans chapter 14 is going to get into answering those problems in the church. And they are a problem in the church. Uh, the petty things that come up between Christians. And so Romans chapter 14 is going to look into that and go over that and hopefully give us some ways to fix that uh, within the church. Now, sometimes we all do this. Confession. I grew up in church and I was always put off even as a little kid by those um, what we would call come back, those that come back to God. Continually do that. Seem to do it I don't know, monthly even, that they they cry, cry their crocodile tears and they come and beg God, beg church to forgive them for all that they've done wrong. And even as a little kid, I, I just, I knew those people. And I knew, I don't know, that I would judge them even as a little kid, that I didn't believe that was a true confession or that was the true way that they should have done things. But... As I've gotten older, and as I've hopefully somewhat matured, I, I can understand some of their struggles that they may have had. Um, sin is sin is hard. <laughs> sin is controlling in our lives, and sin can overtake us sometimes. And so, uh, I, I've gotten to where I kind of understand that a little bit more. But there are differences in us as Christians. And we're going to look at the church in Rome, which Paul is writing to here in Romans 14. We're going to look at a couple of their differences, specifically that, that Paul lists here. And those being what they're eating, uh, what days they keep sacred, even what they're drinking. And hopefully we can learn, not hopefully, we can if we apply God's Word to our hearts, we can learn about what it means to not judge and to answer to God only and even to help those uh, other Christians not to stumble in certain scenarios. So let's just get right into our lesson. Um, you'll, I have my my notes here in front of me and I have my Bible or my, the, the chapter here beside me. So if I'm looking down, just that's what's going on here. So um, it, we're going to start by reading Romans chapter 14, verses 1 through 4. Him that is weak in the flesh receive ye, but not to doubtful disp disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another, who is weak, eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not, and let not him which eateth not judge him that, do, that eateth, for God hath received him. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. All right, so what do we have going on here? First, some in the church uh, were eating meat, and some, whom Paul calls weak here, wouldn't eat the meat. Now, we have to remember that Rome, the Roman church, was a very diverse church, um, it was right in the middle of one of the biggest hubs um, in all the world. It was a major, major city, and it was a very diverse church. And so you had different backgrounds um, 
And so some here were having no problem eating the meat in the church, uh, or eating meat. Um, And some, um, again, Paul calls them weak in the faith, uh, were, were having no problem eating meat. I mean, we're having a problem with the meat. And so we have to first look, why was this a problem? Well, what's, what's the Bible say about why this would have been a problem? For the, so the first thing is the Old Testament law uh, forbid eating of any unclean meats, any lists in the Old Testament where those unclean meats are, or any meat used in pagan sacrifice. And so many of the Orthodox uh, people would not eat any meat um, that was, especially those that were sold in the market because they had no idea where that meat came from because most meats that were sacrificed to pagan gods were then just repurposed and sold in the market. People ate them. Well, God had, Jesus when he came had done away with the old law and Peter even had a vision from God um, in in Mark chapter 7 that all meats were clean to eat now and um, they would they would that would have been a well taught um, uh, belief and, and then Paul even in another letter in, to the letter in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 he writes that all things are clean uh, all meats are clean all things to eat are clean so this would have been a well established um, belief now that we can eat uh, any meats that we that we would like, but that wasn't really what Paul was trying to get across here. That wasn't the point. What Paul was trying to teach the Rome and the church in Rome is there are things that some people will disagree on. Um, in this particular case, it's the eating of the meat, and they were having a rift. They were having a problem. Uh, those that were weak in the church were. We're having a problem with those that would eat the meat, and then those that wouldn't eat, those that were eating the meat, had a problem with those that weren't eating the meat, saying, you know, why are we, why are we fighting over this? Why are we having an issue with this? So they were butting heads, and that was not a good way for them to, uh, to fellowship together. So Paul um, is trying to teach them here that it is not worth. Um, these, this thing is not worth getting angry about. So in verse 3, he asks uh, that we receive one another in fellowship, that we, we, just, we just communicate with each other. We receive each other in fellowship. And the question is, why is that? Because in verse 3, it tells us, in the end of the verse, it says, For God hath received him. So it says, Let, us, let not him that eateth the spice in it, he eateth not. And let him which eateth not judge him, eateth not, judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. So, what Paul is telling them is that these are all the children of God. We're all children of God here. Whether you eat or don't eat of the meat, it doesn't matter. We're all children of God. That doesn't make us children of God. That doesn't um, exclude us from being children of God or include us if we do or don't eat the meat. Um, But Unfortunately, the people in the church were, the, the, the weak were looking at the media saying, you have abandoned the orthodoxy, you have abandoned our, our old ways. And the meat eaters were looking at the weak saying, you're unlearned, you're ignorant of, a new, of the new law, the new uh, covenant that God has given us. We don't have to do that anymore. And so it was, it was causing that rift in, in Paul is trying to get them to understand that this doesn't matter. We're all children of God. We've all been received by God. Verse 4 says, Who who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. It's not the servant's job to judge another servant. If you look at it in in which he uses a slavery, we are slaves to Christ, we are slaves to God. We have given away our own self to him the slaves one slave judging another slave that what what are we what standards are we judging them against Uh, we are all (laughs) um, servants we're all slaves only we the only judge that we should have is the master the master is the only one that should judge us 
for um, it says verse four continues to say, "Yea, he shall be holding up, for God is able to make him stand." That's what Paul is trying to get across here. Is it's not our job to judge the other servants. It's not our job to judge the other people within the church. Um, in these small things, God, they are children of God, and they are going to be the. It's the master's job to take care of that. So, just real quick, sorry, I gotta, I gotta get into this here. As an aside, this isn't in the lesson, this isn't in the chapter here, but I think it's extremely important that we understand this um, for our own sake as Christians and for the rest of this lesson. So, there are reasons there are different faiths. There are reasons there are different denominations. Oh, let me go back, not different faiths. There are reasons there are different um, religions. There are reasons there are different denominations, and there are reasons there are different congregations. Um, there is only one Bible. There is only one Word of God. There is only one correct interpretation of the Word of God. There are many applications, but there is only one correct interpretation of God. Now, unfortunately, we are humans, and we look through it through a human lens, and therefore, we differ on what that one interpretation of God of the Bible is. So God intended it one way. And unfortunately, as people, we differ on what that was. Um, and so um, that's why we, we try to do our best to get as close as we is what we believe. So we'll get to that in just a minute. So there are tears, for lack of a better word, uh of things that we disagree on on that interpretation and still have fellowship together. So, bear with me here and follow along just a few moments. Tier one of differences are the things that separate Christians from non-Christian religions. I.e., for an example, believe in one true God, Yahweh. Uh, believe in salvation through faith alone, or or that God is the creator, um, that God is omniscient, whatever that may be. There's a difference between a Christian religion and a Buddhist or a Hindu or a atheist or whatever you want to say. So those are tier one differences. We got to agree on the tier one differences, or we're not Christians, or we're we. Somebody's a Christian, somebody's not. I disagree with a uh, Hindu because we disagree on who God is. And so, therefore, I'm a Christian, he's a Hindu. That's tier one separations. we got to have those down. Tier two things are what separates denominations, i.e., what makes us a Baptist. That could be baptism. That could be what the Sabbath day is. That could be uh, church ordinances. That could be when you take church ordinances. That could be, um, uh, honestly, tier two could be a litany of things. That's the reason there are thousands upon thousands of denominations within the Christian religion. Um, there are Baptists, Methodists, Presbyterian, Church of Christ. Some people would put Catholic within that. Um, and so, these are the things that... <laughs> Uh, we tend to, we really need to get down, but yet we can still be consider them part of the Christian faith. Um, I may disagree on uh, when to take the Lord's Supper, but I can still call you a Christian and still agree that you are a Christian, but disagree on that. Uh, I can disagree on um, infant baptism, but if you still believe that salvation is through faith alone in Christ alone, then we can still fellowship as Christians. So those are tier two things. We need to have those down. Those, we need to know what we're talking about. Now, tier three are the things that make us Harpeth Baptist Church as a fellowship, as a body of believers. And those are things like music type or dress or area or maybe what translation you like to use or um, how you run your church 
um, elders, deacons, um, things like that. Those are tier three things. And we can disagree on those. And we can even still fellowship as a church. And those are the things that Paul is talking about. You should not give up and not worry about the things in tier one and tier two. Those are important. You should know why you believe those things. You should. That's what makes us Baptists. That's what makes us Christians. Tier three things are the things that don't particularly matter, but they're good to do. In this particular case, whether or not you eat the meat. Paul is saying that that doesn't matter. If you are, It doesn't make you one of God's if you eat the meat or don't eat the meat. You're already one of God's. That's what he's saying here. So those are the things that were causing the rift, the tier three things. The color of the carpet were causing the rift. Uh, what songbook you used were causing the rift. It, whether or not we have um, deacons in the church, that's what was called, or not whether or not we have deacons is an important thing, don't get me wrong, but the number, let's say, of deacons or the budget of the church. Those were the things that were causing the rift in this church, and those are the things that Paul is trying to tell them. It doesn't matter. They are gods. So that was an aside. Um, kind of got off track there, but we'll get back to the thing. All that is to be said that you should put your foot down in things, and you should fight, and you should you should know within your heart, which we're going to get to in just a moment, the things that are important. Um, but God said there are some things that just aren't worth fighting over. There are some things that that He has put in our hearts that just, I mean, put in our lives that fellowship with our fellow believers is more important than. And so we'll get to a few more things here as we continue on in, in uh, Romans chapter 14. So, Problem two that they're having, we're going to see here in verses 5 through 12, they're having problems with holy days. So let's read so we can get to that. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day regardeth unto the Lord, and he that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to, to, to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not, to the Lord he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. For none of us liveth to himself, that was tough, <clears throat> and none, no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, then he that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set not thy brother? For we shall all stand there, stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. So here we see that some are worried about certain holy days. And then it says there that some regardeth this day, esteemeth one day above another. Um, same general idea here is these were from the Old Testament uh, laws, and they were some people were more strict and holding on to the Old Covenant and the Old Ways. Um, and Paul is trying to tell them, again, these aren't bad things. If you want to do that, that's if you believe that, that's great. If you don't, that's great too. It doesn't make you gods. You are gods through the new covenant. So verse 5 gives us the answer to this problem of some people wanting one holy day and, or certain days better than others or esteemed more highly than others. And it says in verse 5, the end of it, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. So what does that mean? What does it mean to be fully persuaded in your own mind? It means we should know what we believe and know why we believe what we believe. I can to be persuaded means I have been convinced of something. I have been convinced to do this. And so um 
to do that, you have to know what you believe. And so if you believe that you sh you're okay to eat meat, fine. You believe that. Why? I believe it because Peter came and told me, and or I, if I'm a part of the Roman church, I believe it because, because I have heard from witnesses that this has been established from passed down from an apostle on to our church, and he has possibly preached there and told me about it. I have my reasons for believing that. And so if I believe that, I don't know, that Sundays are our worship day, I should know why I believe that, and I should have scripture to back that up. Um, and so we should be fully persuaded of that. Should I take the Lord's Supper? You should know why. Um, we, we give tithe. I should know why I give those things. I should be persuaded of those things. Um, so... Paul is trying to tell them that you need to study, you need to, to seek God's wisdom on these things. Because if you're going to take a stand on something, you need to know why. You need to know what you believe and why you believe it. And so it goes on in verse 6, um, that 6 through 8 to answer again the problem continues. We, we, we have said... Um, that we have this problem. And then it says, uh, da, 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 let me find my notes here. Um, verse 7 says, For none of us liveth unto the self, and no man dieth unto his self. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. So whatever we're doing, we're not doing it for that person over there. We're doing it for God. We're answering to God for what we have done. Um if he eats or drinks or whatever he does, he's doing. You're doing it for God and to the Lord. So you need to know why you do those things. So verse ten then continues with a question: Why then do we judge? Which he's already asked that question before. Um, verse ten says, "Or why dost thou set naught at thy brother? Why are you having this fight with your brother over this? I'm telling you." For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And guess what? We're all going to fall short at that judgment seat of Christ. Whether we eat of meat, whether we don't, whether we seem some days holier than others, we're all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And we're all going to fall short. We can only claim Jesus Christ in us. That's all we can claim. And if we can't claim that, we have no argument for anything else. We're going to fall short because we're going to be judged up against Jesus. And because of that, we're all going to fall short. Verse 11 then is one of my favorite verses. It's very similar uh, in other passages. But it says, For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So we're all going to be equal. We're all going to be level whether you're strong or weak, whether you're a babe in Christ or a, a, an old wily veteran of, of the Christian faith, we're all going to be equal at the feet of Jesus. And the only thing we can claim is Christ Jesus. So why are we judging each other? Why are we setting naught, setting ought against our brother? Why are we having these problems within the church if we're just all going to fall short of God anyway? And we just have Jesus Christ to claim. So the answer to question two, what holy should we keep the holy days or not? Simply says, you only have to answer to God. You don't have to answer to them. That's between you and God. So chapter verses that's kind of where the, the lesson ends. Here's where I'm gonna kind of take it a little further. <coughs> so bear with me here. Got a tip on my throat. So verses 13 and 23, we're going to read that in just a moment. But here is where the chapter's rubber meets the road. Let's, let's read a little bit. I'm going to actually come back to that. Up to this point, <laughs> you might could argue, well, as long as I'm okay with it, now I feel God is okay with it, I'm persuaded within my own mind that it's okay, what, 
why why am I worried about what someone else I don't care what they think about me they can be angry at me all they want to I know that I'm right I feel that I'm right I can do whatever I want to it doesn't matter if I want to eat my meat I'm gonna eat my meat if I want to um, not worship on that holy day great I'm not doing it if I want to uh, use the this translation of the Bible I'm gonna do it if I want to you know go out and do this that or the other on the weekend I'm gonna do it it's between me and God you could actually make that argument I mean that's what he is telling you it's between you and God but God didn't leave it there God is our judge and he is going to put us to a standard and here's where he's putting one of the standards in there. So let's read in verse 13 here. Let's pick up there. Let us not therefore judge one another. We've established that. But judge this rather. If you're going to judge anything, if you're going to worry about anything, this is what you should worry about is what he's saying. That no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. It says let us not judge one another. Again, we can stop right there. Boom. I'm good. God's telling me not to judge one another. You leave you alone. You do you. I'm going to do me. Let's leave each other alone. We'll worship together. If you've got a problem with me, I'm sorry. I've got it all figured out. you got to figure it out. So, if we leave it there, again, we're, we're good. But in, However, the verse does continue. And God gives us something. It says, but if you're going to worry about anything, worry about this. No man but a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Wow, that's a huge statement. So I'm not an island. I'm not standing there by myself. I'm not a, an island in a big chain doing my own thing. You got you, you got, I got me. I'm not. Others are looking at me. Others are looking to me, maybe. So what does that mean for me? It means we should not continue to do something that may confuse, anger, or otherwise call us a brother to sin. That's what he's telling us here. Let's read a little bit more. I know I am persuaded by verse 14. I know I am persuaded by the Lord Jesus. There is nothing unclean in itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. But if thy brother be grieved with the meat, now walkest thou not charitably. Destroy him not with thy meat. For whom Christ died. Let not then your good be evil spoken of. So there's nothing wrong with eating meat. He's telling us there's nothing wrong. It says in verse. Da, 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 da. I, I, I've lost it here. I'm so sorry. <laughs> he says there's nothing wrong with eating meat. There's nothing wrong with the things that we've already discussed. There's nothing wrong with fill in the blank, whatever it may be in your life that you have esteemed, that you have been persuaded that is fine or bad. Um, and you're correct. But there are many young Christians, there are many weak Christians, there are many uh, unlearned or ignorant, ignorant just meaning unlearned in this particular scenario, that may differ in their views and may not see the things the same way you do. So what are we to do? So what are we to do with that? Stop doing that which we feel is okay. We feel it's fine. So we should stop doing it just because someone else has a problem with it? Yeah. Maybe that's what we can do. Maybe we should do it until we can scripturally teach them why we feel it is okay. In this particular case, talking about the meat. We know that Paul has established that it's fine to eat meat. Maybe it we we don't do that in front of a brethren or a sister that is having a problem with it, whatever it may be, whether it's um, not the way you dress or um, the music you listen to or um, the whether you drink wine or um, the eating of the meat because it talks about both those things in just a moment. If you have a brethren that has a problem with that, you may need to stop around them. So that they don't have, they don't stumble and they don't fall. Maybe you need to teach them, show them scripturally 
this is why I do what I do. Because I've been persuaded. God has shown me this is why I do what I do, or this is why I don't do what I don't do. And so, or maybe, so am I saying that you shouldn't do these things all the time? No. Uh, if you have been persuaded that it is okay to do this or not okay to do that, whatever direction you're taking it, then you need to, in your own home, again, we're not hiding it, but we're just not flaunting it in front of someone that may have a problem with it because we don't want to be a stumbling block. We don't want someone to see us and think, well, they're watching this movie or they're going to this place or they're doing this, that, and the other. I thought they were Christians. And maybe if you took time to show them where it's okay or I agree that I shouldn't be doing that or whatever the case may be that it is being convinced you have been persuaded of, you can take, explain them. That's why them. That's why an open fellowship is important. So just know that there is there is a time to do things and a time not to do things. And when you can call someone to stumble, that is a time not to do things. So it says in verse, we've read verse 14 and 15. Um, let's go to verse 17. Um, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. The things that we do don't make us Christians. It is our heart, it is our faith, it is our righteousness, our peace, and our joy in, in, in the Holy Ghost that define us as Christians. And so, for he that is in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God. Verse 18. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherein one may edify another. So that's what we should pr pursue. The things that we do should make peace with someone else, should edify someone else in the church. And back in 1 Corinthians 10, 23, I'm just actually going to pull it up on my computer and read it to you here. Um, it says that all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Paul is saying in, in 1 Corinthians that things in and of themselves are not evil. So he's talking about food given, sacrifice to pagan, um, pagan idols in this particular case and other things. Those things in themselves are not evil. And so they are, all things are lawful for me, but all things don't edify. So I... The Bible doesn't specifically say I can't do this, but does it edify? Does it does it encourage? Does it help a brother or a sister in Christ? And so when someone asks me or when someone can ask you, what does the Bible say about this? And maybe we don't know. Maybe it doesn't specifically talk about said thing in the Bible. You can come back to this and say, does it edify? Does it build someone else up? Because those are the things we should be concerned about. The things that edify a brother or a sister in Christ. Not the things that make us happy. Not the things we want to do. Again, what you do is between you and God. You've established that. But what you do around your brothers and sisters in Christ should edify, should build up, should bring to unity, not butting heads. And that's what was pro the problem here in the Roman church. They were fighting about these things. And so sometimes I have to do things that I don't want to do. For an example, we use the King James Version in our church. And we do that for a couple of reasons. One, it's beautiful. Uh, two, uh, so everyone is on the same page when we're reading. But let's just say... I personally have a problem with the King James Version. I don't, but let's just say I do. If, and I've been asked to teach a Sunday school class, I may in my own home use the NASB or use whatever. 
And that is what I have decided to do. And that's perfectly fine. I feel that between me and God, that is a decision I have made. Great. But when I'm in the church, I'm not going to ruffle Brother Chance's feathers by saying, no, I'm not using the King James Version. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. I'm going to use my version that I want to use and only that version. And there's nothing you can do about it because I believe that it's right. I'm not going to do that. You know why? Because it's going to cause a problem. It's going to cause a rift where I could say, okay, I'll use mine. But when I come together as part of a church, I'm going to fellowship instead of fight. And I'm just going to go along with that. It's a tier three thing. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. It's not making me a Christian or not. It's not even making me a Baptist or not. It's just what I prefer. And so those are the things that Paul is talking about here. The things that we do that edify. And so the question, answer to the question, should I do this? Verse 21. It is good neither to eat flesh, nor drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumble, or is offended, or is made weak. If it's going to hurt somebody, sometimes you just shouldn't do it, especially around those people. You may establish in your own home or in certain groups that certain things are okay. And that's fine if that's what you have been persuaded of. As long as it's just one of the things that don't make you a Christian um, that we can differ on. Hast thou faith? Verse 22. Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that which is alloweth. Just because you can do it doesn't always make it right. Just because you can do it doesn't always mean it's right. Happy is he that doesn't condemn himself, doesn't hurt himself, doesn't hurt himself with his fellow believers just because it is allowed. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat because he that eateth not of the faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. It is a sin to do things out of faith. I've gone longer than I wanted to. I thank you for sticking with me this morning. Um, I hope that if nothing else you get, that we want to build together. If, if, if someone is offended by what you're doing, if you, if you don't like what somebody is doing, go to them. Build a relationship with them. Instead of being angry at them, um, come talk to them. Um, build a relationship. Build a a trust there. And if it edifies, build those things. If it encourages, build those things. And if it makes someone stumble, remove that. Um, hope you had a good Sunday school lesson. Join me again next week. We'll be looking at the next chapter. And uh, pray that we have a great service today. And I pray that you have a wonderful week in God. God bless you. All is at rest I am my Savior Am happy and blessed Watching and waiting